Um, look, I'm, I'm glad economists got a bagging yesterday, and I'm glad I wasn't here to hear it. Uh, <laughs> I like economics. Um, I really do. I think it's very useful. That's what I'm going to talk about today a bit. But uh, I don't like a lot of economists, and I think it's important for people to understand the difference, that there's a difference between uh, the, the role of a discipline and the role that some people choose to play within that discipline, I suppose. And, and economists have been willfully blind to a lot of the problems that we've been talking about, that doesn't mean that economics can't help as opposed to has all the answers. Uh, I think economics can help quite a lot. The main... Uh, I'm I back teaching at the moment, I love it, and uh, I'm teaching an introductory course in economics, which I also love as well, because when you start teaching economics from scratch, it always grounds you very nicely in how absurd so much of what economists take for granted through their assumptions is. But lesson number one in economics is a very, very, very important lesson. It's about something called opportunity cost. An opportunity cost simply says when you do something, you don't do something else. Right, I'm here this morning, I'm not at home. You're here this morning, you're not somewhere else. You spend money buying a car, you can't spend money buying a house. Common sense, opportunity cost, it says when you do something, you give up the opportunity to do something else. When you dedicate resources to problem A, you lose the potential to address problem B. And, and I love economic costs, uh, economic costs, I love opportunity costs, because it keeps conversations about hard things honest. And that's where I think uh, in the back rooms at least some economists have been quite useful, often are, especially when it comes to something like the budget. Because every time a government makes a decision to spend money on problem X, it's reduced the amount of money to spend money on problem Y. Now, why am I going on about this? Well, because the Millennium Goals are a bit of a wish list. Now, do not get me wrong, I like the look of all of them. But as an economist, I look at them and think, well, every time you tackle one of those, what aren't you going to tackle? And as Tony and as I'm sure others have pointed out, that with so many things on the list, when you see sustainability down the bottom, you get a little bit worried. I certainly get a bit worried. To put it into context, I used to, I used to drive past a, uh, a martial arts gym on my way to work years ago, and it had this great sign and the sign was there for the five years that I drove past it, so people must have liked it. It said, we specialise in beginners, intermediate and advanced. <laughs> oh, it's a clever crowd. Some people don't get it. Now, they didn't go out of business. People didn't think, these people are rubbish. Either they don't know what they specialise in, or they're lying to me about it, or they're not specialists in anything, they're generalists. No, they were profitable for at least five years. It's hard to say what you specialise in. It's hard to say what your focus is. It's hard to say what your priorities are. Because as soon as you do that, you've said what your priorities aren't. You say that sustainability is more important than world poverty? Well, you just lost half your audience. You say sustainability is, uh, well, tackling world poverty is more important than sustainability. You just lost half your audience. But the problem is, unless we actually are quite clear about what our priorities are, we can actually get around to achieving very little. Good example of this going on in the moment. Uh, you'll find that uh, the, the, having a new round of uh, discussions about what minimum wages should be. I guarantee you that in the next month or so, if you read the papers and listen to the news, you'll not hear one person speak about any other priority in wage fixing than how best to help the poor. Everyone wants to help the poor. We should help the poor by raising the minimum wage. No, 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 no. We should help the poor by lowering the minimum wage. You watch the debate, because if we raise the minimum wage too much, the poor will become unemployed and they'll be even worse off. If we raise the minimum wage too much, there'll be inflation and the poor will be even worse off. You will not hear one person put their hand up and say, stuff the poor. What about the profit share? 
It won't happen. The whole debate will be, always is, framed in terms of how best to help the poor. In Australia, for the last 20 years, economic growth has nearly doubled. Sorry, economic growth. The level of output has nearly doubled in 20 years. That is, we're nearly twice as rich now as we were 20 years ago. And Indigenous health outcomes? Oops, you missed out. No one's ever said, we don't care about Indigenous health. In fact, when asked, I'm sure most politicians put their hand up and went, yes, yes, very important, very important. We just didn't do anything about it. So my, my, the, the, my topic for today is, are the Millennium Goals sustainable? Well, the reason I ask that is because if you ask most people how you would go about addressing health and the lack of health services, they'd say, well, clearly we need to spend more money on it. Well, where are you going to get more money from? Ooh, well, I could take it from you, or we could have some economic growth so there'd be more. And because I want to keep everyone happy, I don't want to take it from you, so we better go after some economic growth. How are we going to spend money investing in education in developing countries? Well, that's going to be expensive. Where are we going to get the money from? Well, I could take it from you, might lose you, or we could say, well, what we clearly need is more money, so we're going to need some more economic growth. And if we get that, then maybe we can afford to pay for that education. So if you go through the list of the Millennium Development Goals, you'll find that most of them are expensive. Rightly so. Please don't interpret me that I'm suggesting that we shouldn't pursue these goals. I'm just saying there's two different ways that we can pursue these goals. One that's going to cost you and I, and one that's going to cost the planet. Because if you and I aren't willing to stump up for education that they're not currently getting, then we're going to have to grow the cake, aren't we? We love to grow the cake, because when we grow the cake, we can avoid hard decisions about how big each person's share is. That's why we shouldn't give low income earners a pay rise, because they don't really need a pay rise, they need a bigger cake. We don't want to have a conversation about the size of the slice. No, no, that's, that's win-lose. That's hard, that's difficult. That's 19th century. We've gone beyond that. We're into win-win. No one loses. We'll all be better off. All we need is more economic growth, except for the planet. So, as I said, please do not misunderstand me. I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't pursue uh, the Millennium Development Goals. I'm just saying we need to be honest with ourselves, with each other, and with the people we're purporting to help about how exactly we're going to go about doing that. Because we've doubled Australia's GDP in 20 years and delivered precisely nothing in, in terms of Indigenous health outcomes. So do we really think that if we double GDP again, it's a certainty that Indigenous health outcomes will improve? The weird thing is that despite the fact that we've been really interested in delivering for low income earners, and really interested in delivering for Indigenous health, we accidentally made rich people a lot richer. Whoops! That one just sort of slipped through while we had our grand plan. So we could tell ourselves that, well, what a missed opportunity we've had, but surely we wouldn't be so silly as to repeat that again. But a cynic like myself might be a little bit dubious. Because, as I said, if we, if we really want to tackle health, if we really want to tackle education, not just in a rich country like Australia, but in developing countries like Africa that not only are already behind the eight ball, but as, as Tony's data suggested, are going to suffer a disproportionate burden, well, we can tell ourselves that a bit more economic growth will tackle the problem for them, but there's no evidence that that's true. 